Hi everyone, I'm Sue Spinato of Toe for Spin Meteorites, and I'm coming at you with another monthly MedBull update. In this video, I will be discussing the 106 meteorites that were classified, approved, and published in the MedBull during June 2022. Yes, I'm a little bit behind schedule, and I hope to catch up by August, but better late than never, right? <laughs> So June wasn't the most exciting month in terms of meteorite classifications. That's okay. It didn't stop me from finding an interesting story to share with you guys. But before we jump into that story, let's take a look at the month as a whole. As you can see from the first slide, there were 12 carbonaceous chondrite classifications and we had 10 of the HEDs. Technically, we had 10 of the Eucrites and Diogenites, there weren't any Howardites that were found or approved for June. I also provided an extra set of numbers that I don't normally provide. And so next to the uh, number of classifications that were approved for the month of June, you'll see the total number of each classification that's uh, currently in the Met Bowl. You're welcome. <laughs> Moving on to the next slide, I think we had something like 68 um, of the ordinary chondrites approved, the uh, L, LLs, and the Hs. Uh, there were 45 of the um, L and LLs and uh, 23 of the Hs, and they're all broken down there. If you want to take a closer look, feel free to pause because we're moving on to the last slide. And so this is kind of the one-stop shop for everything that wasn't in the first two. The achondrites, the Martians, the Lunars, the Rumarudis, uh, the two irons that were um, found. So that pretty much sums it up for the number of classifications. Moving on to the geography. Where were the meteorites found? And as you can see, the number of countries that uh, had approved uh, classifications it's a lot smaller number than we've seen in previous months, um, but the countries that we do see on the list, they are the usual suspects. Uh, pretty much the meteorites are comprised of Northwestern Africa and um, you know a slew of them from Chile, and we have two from China, making a total of 450 from China. So yeah, that about sums it up. No big surprises there. So each month when I work on the uh, monthly MEPL update, I actually read through all of the classifications, each and every one. So the MEPL um, classifications will most of the time include a little write-up. Sometimes if it's a um, dense collection area and it's, you know, the, you know, 29th or the 50th, uh, you know, meteorite of the same name found in that area, they won't go into a story or anything. So there were a lot of those, and then um, the rest of them could be, most of them could be put into two different categories. And that was, this meteorite was bought from a dealer in Morocco. And the other one was, this meteorite was bought from a dealer at the Tucson Gem and Mineral Show. And that's what I read over and over and over. There were a few exceptions, and uh, one of them I found when I was looking at the years that the meteorites were found versus the years that the meteorites uh, were approved. So I pulled the write-up uh, from the MetBull to see what uh, I could find out about this meteorite that had been sitting around for more than three decades. So the first thing I read was that somebody had bought it from a dealer in Morocco. <laughs> surprise, surprise. Uh, so the person that bought it from the dealer, his name uh, is Alan Lang Langheinrich. And I'm probably butchering that. And I am very sorry if I did. Um, the good news is he goes by Alan Lang or Al Lang, which is so much easier to pronounce. <laughs> So this gentleman, L, purchased a meteorite in Morocco over three decades ago and held on to it. Um, kind of interesting, but let me keep reading and see what else I can find out. Um, you know, maybe he was a farmer or just on vacation and didn't know what it was. Oh, well, turns out that Roberto Vargas purchased the meteorite from L, and he was the one that got it classified. 
Well, that is perfect because guess what? I know him and he's awesome and I adore him. And I immediately texted him and said, is there more to the story about uh, your NWA 14955 iron that you got classified? Um, who's this guy? <clears throat> well, as most of you know, I'm pretty new to feature rights. I'm learning really quickly and definitely, you know, soaking up all the information I can find. Um, I wasn't aware that uh, Al is very well known in the meteorite community. In fact, he is one of the known as one of the first big, you know, big time meteorite hunters. He had a prolific career in finding uh, meteorites and fossils. He started back uh, in 1971 in terms of looking for meteorites. That's a long time ago. That's when Topher was born. So that's a really long time ago. <laughs> I like to tease my husband about his age. Anyways, actually <laughs> with uh, Roberto's involvement, uh, I knew he was going to um, give me some great details and uh, he did not disappoint. Uh, first, he educated me on um, Alan's contributions and um, you know just the things that he did for the meteorite community and some of his accomplishments. Um, he did amass one of the largest uh, private collections uh, in the world uh, for meteorites. Uh, he has since sold it, um, but you know, at one time he had meteorites from all the uh, pioneers of the industry in his collection, uh, and a lot of his meteorites uh, have en ended up in, you know, some of the uh, most famous educational, you know, institutions uh, in the world. And uh, he also had a. Um, small uh, historical meteorite museum um, and in his museum he had um, uh, items from the park forest fall and the car from the peak skill fall okay so here's my favorite part of the story um, take a look at this picture so there's our boy roberto um, and alan and his wife iris and uh, lo and behold, look who else is in the picture. I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> Roberto just sent it over to me and I'm, I was like, Mike Kelly's in the picture, oh my goodness. <laughs> so that's our crew, you know, they're movers and shakers. Um, so back to Alan and his wife. So a lot of people would probably assume that Alan bought that peak skill car for his museum or for himself as a gift, but it wasn't Alan that bought it. It was Iris, she bought it for him as a gift. I think that most of the um, guys I know that are obsessed with meteorites would literally like get on their knees and bow down to her and say, we're not worthy. We're not worthy. <laughs> what a um, power move that was. That is awesome. And I hope to do something as totally cool as that for my husband someday. <laughs> so kudos to you, Iris. I bet you earned some major brownie points with that purchase. Um, and on top of it all, uh, not only did um, Roberto uh, walk away with a iron meteorite and get a new classification out of it, he also, and now don't be jealous, don't be haters, but he has the lug nuts to the peak skill car. How cool is that? <laughs> so, hope you enjoyed that little gem of a story. I thought it was pretty cool. So just in case you didn't notice it on one of the slides, uh, the meteorite that Roberto had classified came back as an iron IAB MG, and uh, that classification is the uh, NWA 14955. So there are a few more interesting tidbits that I did find when um, reading all these write-ups, and uh, I'll just share one more of them with you really quick. Um, it uh, I read about it on one of the diagenite uh, classifications, I believe, and um, I believe it was a dealer or a private collector who had um, bought a meteorite and then sold a really big chunk of it to this like science and technology center in China. And I don't remember what it was, but it did capture my interest. And I started, you know, just Googling and I was blown away when I saw the pictures of this place. <sighs> I've been to a few planetariums in my life, but nothing, not even close to this place. It was amazing. The entire center is um, a museum, an observatory, and a planetarium, and it takes up about um, close to 700,000 square feet. If you have a hard time imagining that, how big that building would be, it would be 
about 15 acres. That's pretty big for that type of building. So the building definitely has a different type of look to it, as you can see from the pictures. Um, I read that the architecture was um, the supposed to be the embodiment of astronomically inspired architecture. There are no straight lines or right angles anywhere in this building. Everything is uh, circular or spherical, and uh, it's supposed to mimic the um, the sun, the moon, and the stars. And if you look at these pictures from you know above the center, you can see um, just like the orbital pattern of the building itself. Uh, I just I thought that was really cool. I don't know how someone would manage to build something like that. But um, the dome itself on the planetarium is apparently 425,000 square feet. Um, that's one big dome. <laughs> um, there's also a 78 foot tall solar telescope there. Um, just everything about this place was just so just over the top. It, I don't know if I'll ever get out there, but if I do, I'm definitely going to stop by there. Now, of course, I I would never want to be catty, uh, especially not doing the uh, monthly medical update, but I did read one thing about this, um, you know, world-class, uh, you know, museum in Shanghai. They have on display for the people that come through there, 70 authentic meteorites. And I just thought, how cute. <laughs> I live around the corner from the, uh, the Busick Meteorite Center at ASU. And I think that has something like 40,000 unique specimens uh, on display. So I thought that was pretty cool. <laughs> well, they got to start somewhere, right? So yeah, I'm glad that they started collecting meteorites because, um, yeah, how can you have a center like that and not have meteorites like somehow involved? But anyways, uh, check out the website for that Shanghai um, planetarium and uh, observatory. And, and uh, of course, make sure to check out the uh, website for um, Alan uh, Leinenrich uh, and see his amazing fossil collection and his cool meteorites and just the pictures he has up on the site. Uh, it's a really good site. So last part of our update, I wanted to give a few shout outs to other um, dealers and um, just meteorite enthusiasts in the community who uh, take the time to uh, get meteorites classified. Uh, of course, our crew uh, collectively is waiting on a number of meteorites to be classified. Um, but as people who are in the community know, it's just there's a long line and it's going to take some time. So we just wait with bated breath and check the updates every time they come out to see if um, our our guys have their uh, classifications yet. So we're still waiting, <laughs> fingers crossed, that it happens soon. But as I was looking for their classifications, I did see a number of other classifications for uh, maybe people not in the crew, but people that we consider to be friends of the crew, um, just our you know acquaintances and colleagues uh, you know in the meteorite community. Now keep in mind some of these numbers uh, might not be the most accurate. Um, I do, you know, a quick search. I, I can't go through each and every single classification to make sure that uh, it is indeed tied to the person. But I, I believe most of my numbers are pretty close. So um, uh, for June, Craig Slyman got a, a CVOX3 um, approved. And uh, so congratulations. Uh, that is a uh, rare carbonaceous. It's uh, only one of 23. And I believe that is his second of that classification. So pretty cool. Um, I think he has somewhere around 32 classifications, give or take, all together um, in the Metbull. Another one of our friends uh, that uh, showed up in the Metbull was uh, Juan Aviles uh, Poblador from Jurassic Dreams. Um, I believe he has close to 50 uh, uh, classifications all together. Um, but in the month of June, he had five approved. Uh, he had two carbonaceous. He had one diagenite, uh, one eucrite, uh, mesosiderite. Um, and the carbonaceous, one of them that he had approved was a C3 ungrouped, which is uh, only one of 26 classifications. So congratulations, Juan. Now, this person... <laughs> 
Jason Whitcomb. Oh my. Um, I don't think anybody has him beat as far as I know, at least of the people that we know. I believe that Jason has 112 or close to 112 approved classifications in the Met Bowl. That is wild. Another one of our uh, friends of the uh, Knowledge Bowl like crew, uh, Shen Cheng Yang. Uh, he, I believe he works with a partner uh, named Wan Chen. And uh, between the two of them, they have a lot going on. <laughs> they probably have um, around 80 altogether. They had a lot of good stuff going on last month. Um, and you know, over the last uh, six months, it looks like they got um, 20 different um, classifications approved, um, 15 of them being unique. Um, one of them was the only mesosiderite A2 slash 3, and another one was the only eucrate monomict anomalous. So congratulations to you guys. Good job. So next up is Mark Lyon. He had a diagenite olivine classification approved in June. So congratulations, Mark. I'm not exactly sure, but I think that makes somewhere between 55 and 63 approved classifications in the Met Bowl altogether. And of those, um, 11 of those are lunar and five are Martian. Um, he also has a variety of uh, melts and melt brushes. And um, those melt brushes include the only LL4-5 melt brushia. And let's play a game. If you guys can be trusted to use the honor system, um, Mark has a the only H7 melt brushia. Do you guys know what it is? Can you answer it in the comments without cheating? <laughs> All right, well... I will have to watch the comments and see who gets that right first. So the last person on our list of shout outs uh, for um, June classifications is uh, Matt Stream. He had um, a uh, basaltic brescia approved and that is a rare, pretty rare uh, lunar. It's one of only 18. And uh, he also had a mesosiderite approved. Um, so I believe that makes somewhere around uh, 70 approved classifications altogether in the Met Bowl. And uh, just like Mark, he has a uh, love for those of planetary ones. He has nine lunars and uh, three Martians. I also noticed he has what I believe were silicated irons. Um, one of his uh, classification, iron classifications is uh, one of only 13. And uh, the other was only uh, one of 12. So congratulations to Mastream. So that was your somewhat late June uh, Met Bull update. Um, I hope that you found it informative, um, but I'm always open to feedback if you uh, felt like it was too long or if you would like me to cover um, different information. Um, I'm always open to uh, hearing your feedback um, or your uh, critiques. So um, please send them my way. Um, next month, um, I will hope to catch up, so I will probably be doing the um, July update here really soon. And I'm really excited for that one because we had the uh, Witness USA Ball. And uh, we have, again, we have an inside track with many of our friends that traveled out there. Some of them scored really big, some of them didn't, but I believe that everybody had a good time. Uh, so yeah, stay tuned for uh, stories of Cranfield. <laughs> Anyways, thanks so much and have a wonderful day.